Hi everyone, welcome back to Planning with Raven for those of you who are returning. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss out on any planning or financial advice that gets discussed here on this channel. Um, today's topic is around Q&A with the Raven. I'm so excited for this topic. This is the second time we've been able to do this topic. Basically what Q&A means for this channel is that we've hit another milestone of 100 subscribers. So thank you all for subscribing, tuning in, love it love it love it leaving feedback when necessary i i absolutely love it so thank you all for being part of the the planning with raven family it means the most to me so um if you do have any questions that you want me to answer you can either drop them below in the comment section or you can shoot me an email if you have personal questions i do answer those directly to you versus doing a video on them um, so that's always an option if you're interested. So today we're going to be answering three questions that I received today. These were the most consistent that I noticed. And so we're going to be here to, you know, we're going to get those discussed today. All right. So first question, what is the best way to start an emergency fund? So this is a great question. Starting an emergency fund is super duper important in today's world. Um, I mean, it's always been important, but just with what has been going on lately, um, the influxation of just job security is super scary for a lot of people. So being able to have a cushion to fall back on in case you do end up in a situation that wasn't planned, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to handle those situations. So to answer the question, setting clear and realistic goals is the first step to achieving great things. That's just in general, right? So um, for creating the emergency fund though, if you use your total monthly take home net pay to create a reasonable goal, that'll be the best starting point. So again, use your total monthly net take home pay. A lot of people don't even realize what they take home. Um, it's unfortunate, um, that a lot of people don't realize how much they're bringing in, but that's because a lot of people focus on, I have to make, you know, so much money to pay the bills. Let me get these bills paid. So, um, once we get out of that mindset of, you know, I just have to pay the bills, a lot of great things will start to happen with our money. So definitely, you know, pay attention to what you're bringing home, pay attention to your bills, um, I've done a video on my top four financial life steps. I will link that above in case anyone is interested. But once you, you know, once you figure out what your net take home is, um, you can start setting a reasonable savings goal for yourself. Visualize reaching your goal and then just start tracking that progress along the way. Um, that'll help you like kind of like flush out what is needed and versus what's not needed when you're setting those goals and expectations for your money. So the second question, what are some ways to create passive income? You all, I love, love, love this question. I'm so excited to answer it. The reason why is because I know I've done a video in the past about, um, I think it was the top four investment apps. So investing is great. Investing is the easiest way for a lot of people to create some passive income, but investing is not always the best way to go for everyone. Investing can be really confusing for a lot of people. And with investing, it's like gambling, right? Like there's ups and downs, you lose some, you win some. So there are a lot of other ways to create that passive income. And so First off, for those of you who do not know what passive income is, it's income that is not your regular earnings. So basically like income from a source, like a regular source that is not your employer or a contractor. So um, to break that down, some ways to create passive income would be rental income, affiliate marketing, creating an app. Um, renting out your home short term and the list really does go on with that. There are so many ways nowadays to earn money with so social media. It's unbelievable, but those are just a couple. Um, 
as far as like recommendations for me from the ones that I've mentioned, I would say like rental income if that's an option for you. If not, the affiliate marketing is definitely a go-to. That's like an income that I am actually like looking into for myself. So I definitely recommend doing that. All right, so for the third question, what are some planning tips that you can recommend to someone who has no idea how to plan? You all, I love this question as well. You all have some great questions. Like, oh, so um, with this question, I have to take a step back and think about what I do when it comes to my planning. And so the first thing I recommend is determining what you want to track. There's so many things that goes on in your life, like on a day to day, and you don't even realize it. Like some days just go by so fast. You don't even realize like what you've accomplished, what you've gotten done. And so um, finding out like what you want to track, right? So is it finances? Is it goals? Like do you have yearly goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, daily goals? Um, and then like, are you planning to, like, are you trying to track how to save for a trip, like save for a vehicle, save for your kids, college funds, like the list goes on. So determine what you want to track. Once you've determined that, then you want to think of the best tracking method for you. So I've talked about this in a lot of my planning videos. There's a lot of different planning methods. As you all know, my go-to is the actual paper planner. I also use Google Doc as well. So my paper planner is for my day-to-day -day life, my goals, my traveling. My paper planner is also for me to brainstorm ideas. But my Google Doc is for my finances. So all my finances are tracked on my Google Doc. I do transfer them over to my planner as well, though, just for some consistency for myself. But those are two methods that I use. And so finding a method that works best for you will be the second once you determine what you want to track. And then um, with that being said, like for those of you who have no idea, like if you don't know, you're like, I don't know what I like, play with them. So you can use like a paper planner for a little bit. I recommend using it for at least 30 days. And then if you decide, and eh, this isn't working for me, then try Excel then try other methods because there are so many out there, your calendar on your phone, like whatever you want to try, try it. But I do recommend trying it for at least 30 days. That way you can determine if it's really a go-to for you. So there you have it. Q&A with Raven. If you all would like me to dive deeper in any of the three topics that we covered here today, I am more than happy to. Like I said, these questions were amazing um but definitely shoot me an email or leave a comment below for any topics you would like to see here for the next q a thank you and see you all next time